Hi, I'm Mark McKeon. I'm a peak performance coach and I've worked with athletes and corporate people for well over 20 years trying to help them get the best out of themselves but in a productive and sustainable way. I've also written four books about resilience, well-being and peak performance. Knowing that many of you are already in peak times, busy times, potentially stressful times or about to enter really busy times, the NBN Wellbeing team have asked me to create a series of very short videos with some practical tips and strategies to help you through these busy times. And these videos are exclusively for your use. It's ironic that sometimes when we're really under pressure, we feel like we don't have time to invest in our health and well-being, but science has shown us that the very small things can make a big difference. And today's topic is sleep. Sleep is our daily reset, our recharge. And unfortunately, a lot of people suffer poor sleep. And the primary aspect of poor sleep is broken sleep. When we sleep, we make human growth hormone, which is what sometimes athletes illegally take too much of because it's so important for recovery. It's totally legal for us, but we make it much more effectively through periods of unbroken sleep, preferably five to six hours of unbroken sleep most nights of the week. So I don't mean only be in bed for five or six hours, but to try to set your life up so you can get these blocks of five or six hours of unbroken sleep. So the next day you're able to perform at your best and you don't get in that habit of restlessness and fatigue. So here's a couple of small tips. Firstly, don't doze on the couch at night because all that will do is stop you sleeping better later on. Try to drink much more water earlier in the day, even as much as two litres by about lunchtime and then also into the early afternoon, but after about 4 p.m., unless you're in a really humid environment or you're physically training that night, try to only have about one to one and a half glasses of water. What that means is that you'll be urinating earlier in the evening and the call of nature won't interrupt your sleep in the middle of the night. And a small change like that can make a huge difference. Try not to eat too much within about two hours of going to sleep and certainly nothing in the last hour or so. If a dark room helps, certainly set yourself up in a dark room. But the most important aspect of sleeping well is having a transition to sleep. Here I am in the evening, it's about an hour or so before I'm ready to go to bed, so I'm now telling myself it's time to wind down. I'm gonna switch off my computer, I'm definitely not going to be using my iPad because the blue light of iPads actually suppress melatonin production. And melatonin is the, the substance that makes us feel drowsy and helps us get to sleep and stay asleep. So if you wanted to, a recipe to sleep poorly, just use an iPad at night. It's a real no-no. It can really affect your sleep patterns. I've got my list here of all the things I need to do tomorrow at work, but also personal things. If I need to pick something up on the way home or do something for the family, I'm getting it on my list. So it's out of my brain and it's on my list. I'm switching my phone off and I'm leaving all these devices in this room, which is different to where I sleep. So it's right away from what I'm doing. And in the last half or an hour or so, I'm just going to chill out a bit. I'm just going to slow down. If I'm watching TV, it'll be low key TV. I might sit out on the deck, I might have a chat. I might, but I'm deliberately slowing myself down so that when I get to clean my teeth, as I'm sure we all do before we go to bed at night, I'm actually feeling drowsy and I'm ready. Don't go to bed angry. Don't go to bed stressed. You are not going to sleep well. So it's about having these strategies to ease your way down. If possible, it's great to go to bed roughly the same time most nights because your body does get into that routine. And if you do happen to wake during the night, Try not to get too anxious about it. Even if you're tossing and turning, toss one side slowly, turn over slowly, don't punch the pillow and get angry. All you're doing is keeping yourself awake. So there's three specific things I'd love you to remember this week, and I'd be wrapped if you have a go at some of these strategies yourself, if your sleep habits can improve. The first one is to have a transition to sleep. The last hour, even half an hour before bed, your devices are gone, your phone's off, you're starting to just slow down and prepare yourself for sleep. The second one is to drink much more water, but earlier in the day, so that uh, the call of nature won't interrupt your sleep in the middle of the night. And the third one, make sure you don't have any of this blue light within two hours of going to bed, because it's absolutely a recipe to keep you awake. 
So thanks for watching the video. I hope you have a great week. I know times are demanding and you're busy, but a few of these strategies can make a big difference to yourself and everyone around you. So have a great week.